Okay, sports fans, this is what we're going to build. Uh, the rocket ship from It's a Day Out uh, with our superheroes Wallace and Gromit. Now, when I looked for an image, I found all kinds, and this one here is the one that I decided to uh, use because it's got pretty good detail and it's a nice direct view of it, which makes it a little bit easier to model. Um, there's variations of it. Uh, for example, this one here is actually a clip from the movie and it has a door down below where the one we're going to build has a door up on top. You can do both if you want. You can certainly exercise some creative license when you make your rocket ship. Now I'm going to be using SketchUp Free or SketchUp for Schools, um, essentially the same thing. And I'm going to be using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. So whenever I tap on a key on my keyboard, you're going to get this... Uh, pop-up so that you know what I'm doing. So I'll mention one more thing. If you're wondering about all of the different keyboard shortcuts and how you can use them, I made this video which is on the same channel that you're on right now. And if you click on show more, there's a table of contents. So if you're puzzled on how to use the move tool and some of its options, and when you click on the time indication for the move tool, We'll go through and in a minute or two explain all the different options that you have which should hopefully help clarify some of the questions that you might have about any particular tool. So let's go ahead and start modeling. I'm going to come in and create a new file in just feet and inches. And so here's our new file and we've got this person here who's about maybe five and a half feet tall, not really sure. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that person. And then I'm going to bring back my view of my rocket ship here. And let's just talk about this for a moment. I don't have any way of really measuring this, but I'm going to assume that this door here is about six feet tall, because that's about how tall Wallace is. And therefore, I'm going to assume that the whole height of the rocket ship might be 14 feet tall, and that the bottom half is about the same height. So that just gives us a sense of scale. So if this much is about 14 feet tall, then this is ring that is going around the middle is probably about 14 feet in diameter or a radius of seven feet. So those are just some rough estimates and what we want to avoid is actually making the rocket ship three inches tall. We want to try to work with it in real life, true shape, true size units. So first thing I'm going to do is switch this to parallel projection. Now let's just go ahead and talk about that for a second. I'm just going to make a quick rectangle here and then P for push pull tool and pull that up. So if I was to extend these lines along the green axis and then do the same thing here along the green axis, you can see that these lines get closer and closer together. And that is because we are using a view called perspective. I like to use parallel projection at least to get started. So to change that view, I'm just going to type in parallel or just start and that changes the view. And notice how these lines now are parallel to each other. And the blue axis is vertical and the red axis goes off um, to the right and the green axis is, is 90 degrees. So that helps. It did not actually change the shape of the box. It just changed the way that the camera is looking at it. So anyways, I'm going to just do a command A or select it, all that geometry and I'm going to delete it. So I need to go to top view. So I'll click on this little kind of action deal over here and I'm going to leave this open probably for the whole model. So let's see, where's our top view? I think it is, well, we actually have several here, so I'll just go to that one right there. And so now I am going to choose the polygon tool. So I'll click in here, and there it is right there. So I'm going to click on a polygon, and the default is six-sided. Now, if you look down in the measurement dialog box, it's telling us that it's six-sided, but our rocket ship my best guess is it's about nine sides. So without clicking down in that box, it's really important you don't click down there. Just type in a nine to replace the six and hit enter. And now we've got our 
nine-sided, which I actually called a nonagon. And as we pull it out along the red axis, now make sure you start in the center at the origin and pull out along the red axis. And I want to change this so that the red axis does not intersect in a vertex, but rather intersects in a midpoint of a side. So all I have to do is tap my option key once and see how it changed. Now the sides are perpendicular to the red axis. And I'm just going to go ahead and click anywhere. And what did I say I wanted? A diameter or a radius of seven feet. So all I need to do is type in seven and the foot symbol, hit enter, and it resizes it for me. If I type T for tape measure, I can verify that by clicking here at the origin and coming out to that midpoint. And it tells me that it's exactly seven feet. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take and change my view. And I'm going to type in F for offset. And I'm just going to grab anywhere on this. And I'm going to pull this in, oh, we'll say six inches. So type in six and hit enter. And I'll tap my space bar for the select tool. I'll click on that inside face, delete it. And I'll type P for push pull tool. And I'll push this up, we'll say 10 inches. That gives us, that's going to become the band around the center of the spaceship. Where's my preview? There it is. So I'm making this part right here right now. So I'll go ahead and close that. And I am going to, I can triple click on it or I can take and select all the geometry by dragging a selection box around it. I'm going to right click this and I am going to make it a component. And so I'm going to call this, um, I'll just call it mid ring. Doesn't matter what you call it, just as long as you know what it's called. So, and you can find it later. And these other options we'll get to in just a little bit. If you want to add a description, here would be the place to do it. So that is now a component. And I can come into my components window here. Let's see, where'd it go? Up oh, here it is up here. So if I choose the components right here, we've got Helen, even though we deleted her, and we've got our mid ring. So if we need another mid ring, we can just double click on it and, and bring it out. But we don't want to do that at this particular point. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Now would be a good time to save our file. So let's click on the word untitled. And let's put, I'm going to put it in my SketchUp folder. And then down here, I'm going to enter a name for it. And I'm just going to call it WG Rocket Ship. And that'll save it either in your Tribble account or in your Google Drive. So there are hundreds of rivets in Walsh and Gromit's rocket ship. We've got an array of rivets that go around this band. And then we've got rivets that go up along the different seams. And, you know, that's okay for the cartoon. We're going to do just a little bit different, so it makes it a little bit easier to do within SketchUp. Uh, we've also got the rivets around the doors, but we'll get to that um, when we actually make those. So let's go ahead and put in these rivets along this mid band. Now, as I mentioned, we have hundreds and hundreds of rivets to make, and I'm going to show you in a little bit how to make that whole process a whole bunch easier, but we need to start with one. And you'll notice here that my mid ring, I was very deliberate to center it on the origin where the red, green, and blue axes meet and draw it so that the red axis or the green, it doesn't matter which you chose, but that one of these axes meets this face or one of the sides at a 90 degree angle. So I'll type in O for orbit. There we go. And I'll come around and that tells me that I want to draw on this face right here. So I'll come in and create the start of my first rivet. I'll put it about right there. And I'm just eyeballing here. I'll make it about that size. 
you know, j just as long as it looks good. As a matter of fact, I think that's just a little bit too big, so I'm just going to type in a smaller number to make it a little bit smaller. Now, again, I'll type in O for orbit, kind of move around here. And see that flashing that happens when I orbit around? Well, that's SketchUp telling you that you've drawn one face on top of another face, and those two faces are occupying the same plane. They're both infinitely thin, and so they are coplanar. It's not a big deal, but just want you to be aware of it. So now let's take and make top of the rivet. So with a circle, and you'll notice it when you look at the circles here in SketchUp, they're not really round circles. They are actually 24-sided polygons. You can change that, make it bigger or larger, but SketchUp cannot make a circle. It's always going to make polygons with straight edges and vertices or corners. Now, sometimes you have a hard time starting a circle in the center. So you kind of mouse around, and this time it shows up. I call that a snap. It goes back to my CAD days. But if you're having trouble, just mouse over a midpoint somewhere in your circle, and then when you come down and visually kind of snoop for it, there it is there and click, and that's mathematically the center of the circle. And now I want to come out along the red axes, I would say about, oh, we'll say about 0.5 inches or half an inch. Then I'm going to draw a line that goes from the center out to one of the vertices. Doesn't particularly matter where, so I'll click on that and then I'll connect the three points which will make this triangular face. Now to give this a crown I'm going to type in A for arc and I'm going to start right here and I'm going to come down to here and I'm just going to pull that out just a little bit and see that purplish or magenta color that tells you that that arc is in the same plane as the triangle that is I don't know I guess just to the left of it is the way to describe it so I'll click on that, then I'll type in E for the erase key, and erase that. And now I want to sweep that around to make a three-dimensional object in the shape of this profile or this face. So here's how you do that. And this is where you really want to start to pay attention to each step because they're very important. The first thing we're going to do is select our path. So I'm going to select that circle, the face of that circle, and then I'm going to come over here, and these change all the time, So, but it's over here with the push-pull tool, the follow me tool, and the offset tool. There is no shortcut for the follow me tool, so I have to go over to the left and find the icon. I'm going to click on that, and then without clicking on anything else, I'm just going to click on this face right here, and there we go. There's our rivet. So I'm going to just, if I orbit around, you can see that we've got this nice domed rivet right here. And so what we're going to do then is select it by triple clicking on it. I'm going to right click and make it a component. And we're going to call this mid ring rivet. And we're going to be using that later on, the same rivet. But we're only going to make the one. And we're going to go ahead, this one right here, and we're going to make sure that it aligns or gets glued to vertical surfaces. So we click OK. And there's our rivet. Now, that's a little bit of work, and that's probably what's going to give you the most trouble. But once you get it made, here's the magic of, of SketchUp and working with the computers because we're going to use technology to save time and improve our productivity. When I was your age, there was no such thing as a computer. And if I was using my brain to get out of work, they called me lazy. But this is going to be pretty cool. So here's what we're going to do. I'm with my rivet selected. I'm going to type in M for the move tool. And I just need to pick a base point. Really doesn't matter where. 
So I'm just going to click about there. And then as I drag along the green axis, notice how it's moving it. But here's where the magic happens. I'm going to tap my option key once and it makes a copy. So I'm going to pull that over and kind of get it centered and click. And without clicking anywhere else, do not touch your mouse, but you just use your keyboard and say, just guess a number. So I'm going to just type in six and the divided by key and I'm going to hit enter and look what happened. It gave me perfectly spaced rivets. You know, instead of having to guess and add a whole bunch of guidelines and all that, I mean, there's lots of ways you can do this, but I've made a career about doing less work by being smarter. And this is, I think, is pretty awesome. So now I'm going to tap my space bar to get my select key back. And I'm going to grab all these rivets. I'm holding down my shift key and clicking on each of them. And now I'm going to make the bottom row. So I'll type in M for move. I will click anywhere. And then I'm going to start to pull them down along the blue axes. But I'm going to tap my option key to make a copy. And I'll click right there. And we now have what? 14 rivets? Something I went to there. Yeah, 14 rivets. And we only had to really do hard work to make the first one. Now I'm going to take and tap my space bar again to get my select tool back, which is the arrow tool over here. And I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to grab all of these because I really, really like the way they worked out. And I'm just going to make them a group. So now they're all bundled together. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, I have to do that eight more times? Well, no, you do not. Because again, we're working smarter. This is why you listen to your teacher in class. So we're now going to take this group and we're going to copy rotate it around. And so here goes. It's pretty much the same as the move tool. Uh, the keyboard shortcuts are very deliberate. You can't, I mean, they have to come in a certain order, but you can rewind this video and just follow one mouse click at a time to do this. So now I'm going to rotate, copy these around. And the keyboard shortcut for rotate is an R, that's rectangle, but it's Q. So I'm just going to type in a Q and I get this protractor and I'm just going to put it right there in the center. Now, I keep going back to the origin, don't I? And that's because you got to be really careful and deliberate. Computers work to within, you know, a millionth of an inch. So we have to be very specific about our points or things don't line up. So I'm just going to click on the origin for my center. And then I'm going to come around and just click along the red axis. And then I'm going to start to move these around. But as I'm moving them, I'm going, wait a second, that's not copying. So I, that means I need to tap my option key. So it starts to bring them around. But how far do I bring them around? Well, let's do some math here for a second. You remember when your sixth grade math teacher said, someday you're going to need to know this stuff? Well, guess what? Today's the day. So a circle has 360 degrees of angles or or, or arcs. That defines a circle. And we've taken and we've got nine different faces here, don't we? So what's 360 divided by nine? Well, it's 40 degrees. So all I need to do is type in 40 and hit enter and it copied it for me. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, geez, Mr. Wesson, do I have to do that eight or seven more times? No, you don't, because SketchUp will do it for you. But here's what you need to do. Now, hopefully you haven't clicked anywhere on your mouse. At this particular time, after placing the first one, you can just say, okay, I started with one, I made another, I need to do that eight more times. So without 
touching your mouse. Do not click down in that box, the measurement dialog box down in the lower right hand corner. Just type in 8x for 8 times and hit enter. You're done. You've now got all of your rivets all the way around spaced exactly right and you're ready to move on with building the top of the spaceship. I'm going to do one more thing here and I'm going to come up to my little folder here and I'm going to do a save as. I'm going to put up my Walls and Gromit folder and I've been naming each of these at different stages so that your teacher can give them to you. So when I made the ring, I made it WGRS1. I'm going to make this one WGRS2 so that if you get completely lost, your teacher can download these files and uh, give you one to get a fresh start at any point along this screencast.